In a recent interview, Ocasio-Cortez lamented the fact that her and Joe Biden share the Democratic Party, that the tent is too big, and she said in any other country they wouldn't be in the same party. But I think we're seeing something different. I don't think they're in the same party. I don't think there technically is a Democratic Party anymore, and I have a bit of data that backs up my assumption. There's also a ton of anecdotes. There's a lot of stories in the press talking about the Democrats splitting or falling apart. Here's one from December. Pelosi has lost control of the Democratic Party to AOC and the lunatic left, Scalise says. But that's technically true. They still have some control, but the reality is there's been an ongoing civil war on the Democrat side. Meanwhile, Republicans are unified. I believe if Bernie Sanders had won the nomination in 2016, they'd be equally unified. The Republicans didn't like Trump, but Trump was able to win. He brought on many new voters, people who never voted before, into the Republican Party, creating a different kind of Republican Party. And now they've all essentially centralized around Trump and what he believes in. On the Democrat side, they're in a state of civil war. But there's one fact that makes me believe it's just not even a Democratic Party anymore, and that's fundraising totals. While Donald Trump and the RNC together have raised nearly, I think, well, like half a billion dollars or something like that, the Democratic National Committee is in debt and raised less than half. But the Democrats as individuals raised tons of money. Now, no one raised more than Trump, but together they did raise way more than Donald Trump. But when Trump is combined with the GOP, they beat all the other Democrats. Here's the point I'm trying to make. People are donating to the Republican Party. People are donating to the Republican you know, Congressional Campaign Committee or whatever it's called. It's, the, it's got a different name. They're donating to congressional campaigns, the, the committee that funds them. They're donating to the, the Republican National Committee in general, and they're donating, donating to Trump. All of these things together supporting the same ideas. However, the Democrats aren't. They're fighting each other, and donations are going to individual candidates and not the DNC, which says to me the Democrats as a whole are, well, well maybe it's fair, unfair to say they don't exist anymore, but I certainly think they're on their deathbed. People are supporting Andrew Yang, who says, not left, not right, but forward. People are supporting Tulsi Gabbard, though not the most popular. She is being smeared and slammed by the Democrats. And we can see how MSNBC, the establishment progressive or liberal outlet, omits Bernie Sanders, Yang, and Tulsi, or outright smears Tulsi. There is no unity on the Democratic side. And so what we're seeing is the support for each individual candidate, not for the Democratic Party. There may as well be no Democratic Party if they're not going to get behind anybody and they're split down the middle. Maybe not even down the middle. Bernie Sanders outraised Joe Biden by, I think, like two to one. So who is really supporting what? Bernie Sanders is an independent. He's always been an independent. He's running on the Democratic ticket because you kind of have to. The Democratic Party at this point stands for nothing, is fractured, and is undergoing a massive civil war where people don't even bother to vote for the Democratic Party. In 2016, we saw Bernie or bust. I believe it's worse today. With AOC saying Biden should, they wouldn't even be in the same party, then how can you expect people to, quote, vote blue no matter who in 2020? I'll make a bet. First, Andrew Yang is awesome. I really like this guy. Tulsi Gabbard as well. These are the people I would prefer to vote for. They're likely not going to get the nomination. I'm not insane. I'll be real with you guys. I don't expect it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I can, I suppose. Because I do like them. But if they don't get the nomination, I'm not going to vote for any of these other people. I believe Bernie has pandered too hard. And I think he's pushed some policies I can no longer be, in, be uh, aligned with. Biden, never going to happen. I'm going to vote for my candidate because I believe in them and not for blue, no matter who. I think other people feel similar to me. And I believe other people are upset that Democrats are refusing to stand up against this woke ideological outrage that is slowly taking over the party. Where are the moderate sane Democrats? I don't know. I feel like they've given up, and that's too bad. My early morning segment was Ricky Gervais slamming his Hollywood liberal elites. That video is currently trending. Ricky Gervais's opening monologue is trending on YouTube. I think number one, overwhelmingly liked. Last I checked, it was like 90,000 thumbs up, 1,000 thumbs down. Because regular people are tired of the woke, cultural, far left, whatever. It's probably why Joe Biden polls number one. But there is a large enough faction of these progressives who are going to support it, which says to me, if you look at the Democratic base right now, or I'm sorry, the, the candidacy, what do these people even agree on? They're continually one-upping each other and they don't stand, they barely stand for the same things. 
Many of them are talking about abolishing private health care. Many are saying, no, we need a public option. They're so far spread out. It seems like the battle for the soul of the Democratic Party is completely meaningless when you factor in the X or bust voters. It doesn't matter to me if, you know, Bernie Sanders wins. A lot of people will say, I'm only going to support Bernie. And if he wins, I'll vote for him. Otherwise, I won't. OK, well, I would only support Yang or Tulsi. That says to me, there is no Democratic Party. But allow me to stop ranting and let's 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 read some of these stories. I'm not going to read this Newsweek one. I just wanted to highlight this before we get started. Head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several ways you can give. However, what you need to do is subscribe to my new YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash TimCast IRL. I know many of you were expecting a more on the road van channel. Unfortunately, it has proved nearly impossible. I tried. I made some videos. And in the end, there were a lot of obstacles that made it difficult. What I'm going to be doing now is a higher level interview show and general news, interest, gaming, etc. Just to create a new podcast that explores, I don't want to necessarily say higher level ideas, kind of like academic, cultural, science, and mainstream news. Subscribe to this channel. I will be dramatically increasing my output, doing maybe 10 more segments, a new live show every night, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So stick around for this. It should be coming in the next couple of weeks. Subscribe to youtube.com slash TimCast IRL if you have not done so already. And let's get to the news. This is the first story I want to show you. Pelosi has lost control of the Democratic Party to AOC and the lunatic left, Scalise says. You may be familiar with Steve Scalise. He's a Republican. He faced some serious adversity. He's recovered. And now he's slamming the Democrats because they're being led by this far left. People like Ocasio-Cortez with millions of subscribers have tremendous influence over what the Democrats can do. Now, for the longest time, the Democrats had passive support. And I really do mean passive. People would just vote for them because they didn't like Republicans. This opened the door to the far left and progressives to come in and lead the activists to start gaining ground. Because the original Democratic base is passive, they're not fighting back. Meaning AOC, the Young Turks, etc., other progressives and far leftists are easily able to take over. But let me show you the story from the uh, New York Mag Intelligencer. Let me read you this paragraph right here. They say, Ocasio-Cortez isn't the first politician to become a cultural sensation, but she may be the first to do so at the very beginning of her career, when she is occupying the lowest rung of political power. Her main project going forward may be this, harnessing her immense star power and the legion of young lefties who see her as their avatar, not just to push the Democratic Party away from an obsession with its most moderate members, but also to make the stuff of government, like congressional committee hearings and neighborhood town halls, into must-see TV. She said the Congressional Progressive Caucus should start kicking people out if they stray too far from the party line. Other caucuses within the Democratic Party and Congress require applications. Ocasio-Cortez pointed out, but they let anybody who the cat dragged in call themselves a progressive. There's no standard, she said. The same goes for the party as a whole. Democrats can be too big of a tent. That's a quote. It is comments like that that kept Ocasio-Cortez and the rest of the Democratic Party from reaching any kind of meaningful detente. I ask her what she thought her role would be as a member of Congress during, for instance, a Joe Biden presidency. And here's her quote. Oh, God, she said with a groan. In any other country, Joe Biden and I would not be in the same party. But in America, we are. Right now, can you point to a Republican who does not, for the most part, align with the Republican Party. There's a few, maybe some senators that straggle, but for the most part, they tend to vote for Trump, with Trump. They tend to support similar policy positions and ideas. Some of them may be wishy-washy, but they're aligned. Now look at the Democrats. Joe Biden in no way has anything in common with Ocasio-Cortez. Nothing. You can say Democrat in name only, but which one's the real Democrat? The progressives are taking over. Perhaps in the future, the Democratic Party name will remain, but it will not be the Democratic Party anyone could recognize. As of now, you look to the Republican Party and you, you look, you've got people like Jeff Van Drew switching to the Republican side, and that dude's been a Democrat forever. But here we are. The Republicans are a big enough tent. Trump has endorsed former Democrat Jeff Van Drew, and most people just side with the Republican plan, not the Democrats. They scratch at each other. They spit at each other. And that says to me, it's just a name. There's no party here. They're fighting each other. They disagree with each other. She's dragging Joe Biden. There is no party unity. I believe it's pointless now to even say Democrat because I don't even know who we're talking about. Let's read a little bit more. 
Four days before, Ocasio-Cortez won a primary in one of the biggest congressional upsets in at least a generation. I stood with her on a street corner in Queens across from a bodega underneath the seven train and not far from the housing project where she had been canvassing. Long shot candidates for Congress tend to sound the same. They have a compelling bio, can lay out a theory of why they should win and how, they, how the entrenched incumbent has been absent or ignored community voices or kowtowed to the powers of Washington. But they often crumple under sustained questioning and have fantastic views of how politics work. Well, they try to argue against this, but that's true of AOC. She really doesn't understand high-level economics, political situations. You know, she, she got Amazon completely wrong. The point is, I highlight this next paragraph to show you, she didn't actually win. Let's be real. They used the primarying technique. For those that aren't familiar, Ocasio-Cortez won her seat by getting activists to vote in a primary. Now, let's be real. That's, that's the process. And Joseph Crowley failed to rally primary voters. That's his own fault. That's how the system works. But I do find it absurd that because the passive voters of this district would simply vote Democrat, as Nancy Pelosi says, even if you took a glass of water and slapped a D on it, people would vote for it. She ends up winning, even though she got something like 16,000 votes in a district of 750,000 people. She did not actually win over the Democrats. They just didn't care. She won over the progressive activists. She pushed out one of the highest, the most powerful Democrats. Joe Crowley was ranked the fourth ranked Democrat in the party. And here she is. This says to me, that most Democrats in this country are not paying attention and do not care. Think about it. If their attitude is vote blue no matter who, they don't care who the Democrat is. They don't care about the Democratic Party. They just want to vote against Donald Trump. Think about the people who would vote for Crowley who didn't vote at all and didn't care. They did not care for the Democrat and what he stood for. The activists came out for, for Ocasio-Cortez. She won the primary. And then regular people said, I don't know. I'll just vote Democrat. They didn't care. Ocasio-Cortez won simply because of activist votes in the primary. Well, let's move on. I want to show you a few more things. First, NBC News reports Democrats 2020 split risks handing Trump a big advantage. Even without a consensus standard bearer, Democrats could make the case for their party if they could agree on a, di a direction other than away from the president. Here's the big problem. There is no Democratic Party. I'm going to show you the data next. There isn't one. They can't agree on anything because they don't like each other. Ocasio-Cortez says she doesn't even want to be, essentially, she shouldn't even be in the same party as Joe Biden. How will any of them agree on a direction if they don't believe they should be in the same party? Pelosi doesn't like the far left. The far left doesn't like Pelosi. And donations are not going to the Democrats. They're going to individuals. Take a look at this story from Vox. Just the other day, Trump and Republicans won the 2019 fundraising battle. Together, these Democratic candidates raised about $142 million in the fourth quarter. On the other side of the race, President Donald Trump, the Republican National Committee, and two joint fundraising committees for the GOP pulled in a record $154 million in the last quarter of 2019. The president will head into 2020 with nearly 200 million on hand after raising close to half a billion dollars in 2019, according to the Washington Post. Let me break this down for you. The Democrats together, all of them together, get $142 million. But look at this. The Democratic National Committee reported just 83 million, 83.6 million and 6.5 in debt. That's for, uh, for this year. The Democratic National Committee raised a decent amount. They raised about half of what the total Trump and GOP raised. But think about Trump compared to the Democrats. The GOP, Donald Trump, and all of them together beat all of the separate Democrats. Now, I don't know if they're combining the DNC's money of 83 with the Democrats, because that would be greater than the total uh, GOP numbers. And that's something Republicans should seriously be afraid of. I'm not exaggerating either. If people really do push this vote blue no matter who, because voting against Trump really is this winning strategy, well, then they're raising more money than Trump. But I don't see that. I donated money to Yang and Tulsi. I donated a little bit to Marion Williamson because I did want to see her on the debate stage. A lot of people disrespect her, but I appreciated her positive message. So there's, there's, there's a lot to criticize her for, but I think the media has been very, very unfair to her, Yang, Tulsi, and Bernie, and, and a few others for sure. But what we're seeing here is, the GOP, Trump, and these other committees, they all want the same thing. They all want Trump to win. All of this money is going to be for Trump to win. The Democrats, no. 
The money that goes to Yang goes to Yang. The money that goes to Bernie goes to Bernie. The money that Bloomberg is dumping into the race goes to Bloomberg and hurts other Democrats. The money being pooled by these Democrats is for them as individuals. The Democratic National Committee did not raise that much money. Trump raised half a billion last year. They raised 83 million. You add the Democrats just in the fourth quarter. And I know it's complicated because the monies aren't like one for one. It's it, the, the amount of money that they're showing here, it doesn't actually equate to each other. The point I'm trying to make is that I believe the X or bust donations show that the Democrats are way too fractured. Bernie supporters do not support Biden, which means if Bernie wins the nomination, Biden supporters may or may not support Bernie. I'm pretty sure Bernie supporters will not support Biden. I seriously mean that because you look at what AOC said, and that says to me that her faction will not support will not support Biden. And in an extreme long shot, Tulsi Gabbard wins the nomination. I really don't think it. Who's going to support her on the Democratic side? This says to me that while you have all of this 154 million and Trump's half a billion unified, the Democrats have nothing. Fox News two days ago. Trump campaign and the GOP raised nearly half a billion in 2019. People on the Republican side know what they want. They want Donald Trump. People on the Democrat side are Democrats in name only. They want a, a mixed bag of things that are conflicting and fighting with each other. This is a battle for the soul of the Democratic Party, sort of. But like I said, what does Biden have? He doesn't know where he is half the time. What does he really represent? I guess technically he's a remnant of a bygone era of, of Obama and Hillary Clinton. So maybe he'll still maintain that lead and win. There's a new faction coming in. Several. Bernie Sanders is, is, is an independent. He's not a Democrat. Andrew Yang is not even a politician. Andrew Yang says not left, right, but forward. These groups are raising lots of money, these individuals, and it's for them, not anyone else. Let me show you a couple more things. And, when, and we'll, we'll, I'll probably keep them short because my, my voice is kind of going. This is a story from a couple days ago, Real Clear Politics. Is it even right to call Biden a front runner if he's being eclipsed by Buttigieg and Sanders? This is what I was talking about with passive Democrats. They're not donating to Biden. When asked, they say Biden simply because they're not paying attention and they don't care. How could someone like Biden, who can't re remember where he is at the time, with his bloodshot eye and his gaffe after gaffe, how could someone like him be the front runner? Most Democrats do not care. They're not paying attention. They don't care about what the Democratic Party is. They're barely members of the Democratic Party as it is. So when it comes to the polls, yeah, it's Biden. But when it comes to actual enthusiasm, it's Buttigieg and Sanders. So Joe Biden is the front runner. And that proves my point that the Democratic Party isn't really anything. Nobody cares. Nobody knows what Biden stands for. They're fractured between these two other candidates. So all of these different groups are fighting for the name Democrat. To me, it just shows the name Democrat is meaningless. What's going to happen is probably the Democratic Party will exist in that form with the name. But what does the Democratic Party stand for? Can you tell me? I honestly have no idea. And this brings me to 2020. Check out this story from the week. They ask, will the Democratic Party split give Trump his victory? And the answer is yes. This is from April. The week says, with President Trump's approval rating consistently maxing out around 42 percent, it can seem that there is just one way for Republicans to retain control of the House. They must thoroughly demonize the Democrats, relentlessly labeling them America-hating, baby-killing, economy-wrecking, Israel-loathing, freedom-shredding socialists. Add six or seven percentage points of demophobic swing to Trump's solid base of support, and he will prevail, even if a solid majority of Americans consider the president personally loathsome. But there is another way. Trump could win if the Democratic Party splits. The chance of that happening is probably greater in this election cycle than in any since George McGovern's faction of anti-war progressives seized control of the party in 1972, leaving Cold War liberals out of power for the first time since the Truman administration. This time around, tensions in the party may be greater and the risk of outright fracture even higher than they were nearly half a century ago. Yes, today's Democrats are united in their hatred of the president, but that is where party unity ends. They go on. Spend, spend time on Twitter following Democratic activists and pundits and you'll be tempted to conclude that the party is divided between different factions of left and progressives. Some are enthusiasts for Bernie Sanders, who unwaveringly believes in self-described social, who, who, uh, who believe the self-described socialist is the only option. Others pine for a woman or person of color to be the standard bearer and will settle for nothing less. Many of these Democrats are flocking to Elizabeth Warren. Others gravitate to Kamala Harris. Well, this is an old article. Harris is gone. 
Well, let me make my prediction. In 2020, which is this year, in the election, I should say, what I mean is 2020, the election, Republicans know what they want. They want Trump. They're throwing money at Trump. Trump has raised more than any individual candidate. All of these candidates are raising a lot of money. But together with the GOP and other you know, Republican groups, Trump has outraised all of the Democratic candidates, which means when it comes time to donate to the front runner who wins the primary, who enters the presidential race against Trump, this support for Yang, for Tulsi, for Buttigieg, for Biden will not go to the other candidates. They will not donate to each other. Some will. Vote blue no matter who. Many won't because they hate each other. Ocasio-Cortez slams Pelosi. She slams Biden. She's not saying, when asked, will you support Biden? What did she say? We shouldn't even be in the same party. Well, then why are you a Democrat? Biden's been a Democrat longer than you. What gives you the right to claim to be a Democrat then? Why don't you run as Green Party or as the Progressive Party? Bernie Sanders is, is, is an independent. How does it make sense that AOC comes in claiming to be a Democrat, but then criticizes the elders who have shaped the Democratic Party over 30 years? Don't get me wrong. I'm no fan of Biden or Pelosi. The fact is, she's coming in saying no to Biden, rejecting him, refusing to support him. What do you think happens when Biden wins the nomination? There is no Democratic Party. There are just people claiming they're Democrats because they need the name to actually get those passive votes in certain districts. But when you realize that there are many active votes, too, who won't support the other Democrat, it means that Trump sweeps with 42 percent approval. He's at 45.3 in the aggregate. He's going up. And there it is. The Democrats aren't going to win because there are no Democrats. It is ridiculous to claim AOC and Biden are in the same party and even Ocasio-Cortez says so. So what? What do we have? A Republican party, not the majority of the country, not by popular vote. Maybe it is today. And a bunch of people who claim they're Democrats but believe wildly different things and don't support each other. To me, that's basically a group of independent campaign, you know, not uh, candidates. Democrat is a title. It's a, it's a name. It's a brand. And it represents nothing. I'm losing my voice. I'll wrap it up. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews, 6 p.m. And don't forget to subscribe to Timcast IRL for a new show coming in the next couple of weeks. I will see you all at 6 p.m.